Coming up next on UCF Sports Night, she's one of the top coaches in college soccer. We've got a look at Amanda Cromwell. And the cross country team is ready for the conference championships. We've got a preview. Plus our Sports Night highlight right now on UCF Sports Night. UCF Sports Night is brought to you by UCF TV. Today's show is also presented in part by Budweiser, the perfect balance of flavor and refreshment. Open up a world of taste. By the energy saving conservation programs of Tico People's Gas. And by Syntex Homes, proud to support UCF Athletics. Hello and welcome to UCF Sports Night. I'm Jeff Sharon. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll get to our features in a moment, but first it was another busy week of sports here at UCF as the fall sports begin to wind down their regular seasons. And we start with a look at volleyball in their final non-conference match of the season, taking on an in-state rival. Let's take a look at the highlights. The Knights began the week against the Eagles of Florida Gulf Coast and again Stephanie Cerna came up big. She dropped another 19 kills on the Eagles, her 14th straight double-digit kill performance. Erin Campbell added 14 kills of her own, and Janine Williams chipped in with 10. But in the end, UCF's rally fell short against the Eagles as FGCU came up with the victory in four sets. Head coach Todd Dagenet spoke after the match. And you know, it's, it's just how it is. You, know, you have two choices. You can either fold from it or you can fight. And the team is choosing to fight, and I appreciate it. Then it was back on the road for a pair of tough tests for the Knights. They pushed the Memphis Tigers to a fifth game before coming up short on Friday night. Janine Williams posted a double-double with 12 kills and 13 digs. Then, two days later, the Knights came up short in their second match of the season with UAB. The Blazers took that one in three sets. UCF is now 13-12 overall, with five matches left before the Conference USA Tournament. Elsewhere on the road, the men's soccer team came up short in Lexington against the Wildcats of Kentucky. Yaron Backer picked up UCF's only goal, and Sean Johnson also tallied three saves for the Knights. So UCF came back home on Saturday for an evening tilt with SMU. And what a night it was for Sean Johnson in goal. He certainly did his part, turning away 14 Mustang shots. That's a new team record in a home game and the most ever for a UCF keeper since joining Conference USA. Unfortunately, it was not enough as SMU picked up two second half goals and came away with the 2-0 win. The Knights are still in the thick of things in the conference with just one league game left before the tournament. The women's soccer team also faced the Mustangs at home this Friday and it was senior night at the soccer complex, but it was a freshman and a sophomore who led the way for UCF. In the first half off a corner kick, Lauren Halbert gets control and puts it in the back of the net, her second goal of the year, and that gives the Knights the lead. Meanwhile, Eleni Reyes was outstanding again in goal as she picked up her fifth shutout of the season. 1-0 would stand as the final as the Knights finished the year 6-2-1 on the home field. Then it was back on the road in Oklahoma against Tulsa on Sunday as Danielle Dos Santos, Courtney Whitten, and Katie Jackson all scored. And Eleni Reyes tallied shutout number six on the year. Final score, 3-0. UCF gets the win. UCF now stands at 11-4-3, 6-2-2 in the conference with one match to go against Southern Miss. The women's golf team was in Auburn, Alabama for the Derby Invitational over the weekend. The Knights finished in 12th place overall. Stephanie Connolly paced UCF in the individual standings with a 232 for the tournament. And finally, the football team had a tough test in Tulsa against the undefeated and ranked Golden Hurricane. Rob Calabrese threw for a pair of scores to Brian Waters, but in the end, it was Tulsa who came up with the victory on Sunday night. All right, stick around when we return. She was one of the most successful players in America, and now she's one of the most successful coaches in America. We profile Amanda Cromwell when UCF Sports Night returns. Fan season tickets for men's and women's basketball are on sale now. To order, call 407-823-1000 or order online at ucfathletics.com. UCF Sports Night is back in a moment.
Welcome back to UCF Sports Night. She's played for the U.S. national team and in the WUSA, and now she's one of the top coaches in all of college soccer. Amanda Cromwell has brought a winning style all her own to the black and gold, and that has certainly continued in the 2008 season. We got a closer look at Coach Cromwell in our Sports Night Spotlight. My first impressions of Amanda, <laughs> she's a very intense person, and she'd never seen me play soccer before. She has this way um, about carrying herself that when she enters in the room, you just listen and you look at her. So I would say she's a very intense person, but now that I know her, she's a great coach, a great friend. I think Coach Romano uh, Cromwell's philosophy is going to have to do with the style of play. is going to be possession, attacking. Um, but overall, they say that a team kind of takes on the persona of its leadership. I would just say competitive, intense. There's some aspects of her personality that the team definitely has taken on and it's helped our success. Well, I think it's win, win, win. You know, she wants she want our team to succeed. Sometimes uh, we, we don't have like the good luck as a couple games before, like referees and offsides. But she, she wants us to play hard. She wants us to play with our hearts, like with passion. Pretty much, you have to be willing to do everything like at full speed. Ahead. I think the players respond very well to her, you know, if I were to say that's one of the things she really allows is the personalities of the players and the staff to really come through, it's not always just about her. Every time she talks to us, I always look at her because she, she went through everything. She went through college, she went through professional, she went through national, so she knows what she's talking about. She basically stresses a lot of time management, make sure you know, you're getting in and seeing your academic advisors, that you're managing your time well, you, know, you have two hours of soccer practice plus treatment and then study hall hours if they're required. Then doing good in class, she always say we're going to do good on the field having that player's perspective still, and then having her experience with the national team, and now she's also coaching, um, an assistant coach for the U-20 national team. You know, there are just so many contacts. And, and She understands and can relate to us in a way that if a coach didn't play soccer or wasn't a student athlete, they wouldn't be able to relate to us. And she's so knowledgeable about the game that, I mean, that's, I mean, that's why she's a great head coach. She's not just talking because she's talking. She's talking because she knows. And I know for some reason she would love to be out there with us. And I think her success has come from really instilling, instilling that championship attitude in her players and believing in that. And even when our the players don't believe in themselves. And joining us now is the woman of the hour, head coach Amanda Cromwell of the UCF women's soccer team. Coach, thank you so much for taking some time for us. Thanks for having me. Tell me, I mean, we know you played for Team USA. You played professionally in the WUSA for several seasons. What did you take with you from those experiences to your task here at UCF over the last 10 years? Well, I was fortunate to play many years in the national team and travel all over the world. So we. We played many different countries, different styles of play. Um, so you learn ta different tactics. Uh, the coaches I had on the national teams, you learn from them, um, uh, as well as the professional coaches. So um, through my experiences, all those different coaches, um, the environments we played in, um, you bring it all back um, and, and apply it to what you're doing here. And um, it's it's great because there's so many um, you know, there's so many different ways to play the game and different styles. And you learn, um, and it's not just about the, the game day, it's, you know, it's fitness, it's training ideas. So all of those things combined really um, help me. You've led the team to six conference titles in your time here in two different conferences. What does it take to remain consistently that good over that long of a period of time? Uh, well, the big thing is recruiting, uh, <laughs> bringing in the athletes, and uh, Colby's done a great job with that, being our recruiting co coordinator. And, um, you know, it, we're only as good as our as our players, and um, I think over the years we've we've brought in just top-notch uh, recruits that were in battles with some of our in-state rivals. You know, we, we we now we get recruits over Florida, Florida State, and, and that's what it, what's that's what it takes. And um, just consistent training, and um, you know, our, you know, expecting them. Um, our because of my national team experience, I have a high level of expectations on the fitness side of it and so we do everything that the national team did we do everything that the, my pro teams did 
Um, so we, um, we can compete pretty, pretty well because of our fitness level. We've seen how good the seniors have been this year and that they've stepped up. Mm -hmm. uh, but you've also gotten a lot of help from your underclassmen as well this year. Yeah. Tell us about uh, who's really stepped up for you this year. Well, the first one I mentioned is Eleni in goal. I mean, she's a freshman, true freshman. Um, well, and she redshirted, but like this is her, um, you know, really her, her first year to, to play and, um, you know, just to go right into goal after losing a keeper like Jenny Manis, who was, um, you know, very good for us in goal. So Eleni has done a great job in there and um, has come up with some spectacular saves. And um, Stacy Hubbard now in the de defensive center mid, uh, she's gone, come on strong uh, lately. Um, you know, great work rate, very athletic, just a ball winner. She's really tough. <laughs> uh, she's fun to watch. Um, you know, those two definitely stand out of the freshman class. But there's, a, I mean, uh, Katie Jackson's gotten a lot of time, some starts. Um, you know, and there's other ones that pop in and out that, um, you know, they're, they're finding their niche. Last question for you really quickly. You guys are heading towards the CUSA Championships in Houston. Mm -hmm. Who's going to be the toughest competition for you in that tournament? Well, that's a good question because right, I mean, it's, it's such a big pack right now. We don't even know, you know, who's going to win it yet. So that's exciting. Um, but we always, you know, I think the games that we've we've had this year, Memphis has been, um, you know, always is, is a tough battle. Um, UTEP at their place is a tough. UAB at their, you know, the, when we we get them at a neutral field, it's a little different sometimes. But um, you know, I think Memphis will be one of the top teams to beat. All right, head coach Amanda Cromwell, UCF women's soccer team, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Stick around. Coming up next year on UCF Sports Night, checking with the cross-country team. They're also getting ready for the CUSA Championships. We'll visit with them when we return. Fans, join the volleyball team for the match on Saturday night for Dig for the Cure Night. Proceeds will benefit the Susan G. Komen Foundation for the Cure for Breast Cancer. UCF Sports Night returns in a moment. Welcome back to UCF Sports Night. Time for us to talk a little cross country now as we head toward the CUSA Championships in Memphis with Coach Ty Sanders from the UCF cross country team and one of her runners, Chantille Blackburn. Coach and Chantille, good to see you guys. Nice, nice to see you. Too. Coach, tell me a little bit about how you know you guys have had a little bit of a layoff before the championships, but uh, the team's ready to go, aren't they? They sure are. Um, we have been going through a series of really hard workouts to get them prepared. Um, we had a two weeks uh, where we didn't have anything, no meets or anything. So really we're just trying to get them mentally prepared right now for the meet because they're they already physically prepared. Chantil, you guys have been have a great season so far. Things have worked out pretty well. Uh, tell me how, uh, the, how ready the team is now. You guys ready to go for Memphis? Oh yeah, we're focused on not even coming top three. We're trying to take it home and put UCF on the map. And we've just been working real hard, and we have a bunch of people who just want to really bad for the team and not just individually. Coach, you guys are ranked 11th in the region coming in. you got to be happy with the way things have gone so far, right? Oh, extremely happy. Um, I don't think anyone knew of our talent. Um, we have excelled pretty well this season. Um, I'm extremely proud of the ladies as well as Coach Koza. Um I think we're going to shock the world at conference. So I'm ready. There's some tough competition out there, Chantel. I know you guys have seen it for quite some time. You know, we've seen a little bit of it here and there throughout the year. Uh, tell me, are you guys, would you guys do anything extra to prepare for conferences as you head towards this postseason? Um, try to stay positive during workouts, no complaining, um, fighting through the workouts as much as we can. Um, try to keep the family together and not getting ahead of ourselves. And see who's not better than anybody else and just keep it focused and humble. Tell me coach now the setup for this in the in the like I said the postseason is a little bit different because you have the conferences and then you have the regionals and then you have the NCAA. How does that all work? Um, well, we have conference. Conference really doesn't determine anything. Um, they pretty much go to regionals. You have to get there's a series of um, what you have to do to make it out of region. You either have to be top four as a team, and then it trickles on at, down to teams at large, which is 
four or five different categories that you have to meet. It'll go by the team, and if they can't decide, then it'll go by the individuals in their previous times of competition. So we're looking forward to trying to get somebody to nationals. Um, but like I said, is we have a lot of different obstacles that are not really feasible right now, but we'll see. Ted Deal Blackburn and Coach Ty Sanders from the UCF Cross Country Team, thank you guys so much for coming out for thank us you. here at UCF Sports Night. Good luck up in Memphis. We'll thank see you up there. All right, stick around. Coming up next here on UCF Sports Night, you've waited a month for it, and it's finally here, our Sports Night highlight. Stick around. We've got that and plenty more when UCF Sports Night returns. Fans Night Vision, the official monthly publication of UCF Athletics, is available now. You can pick up a copy at several locations on campus, or to subscribe, call 888-877-4373, extension 121. UCF Sports Night is back in a moment. Welcome back to UCF Sports Night. Of course, this is our final show in the month of October, and that means it's time for our Sports Night highlight. With a little help from our friends at 1011 WJRR and Axis Magazine, we're bringing you the top plays of the month set to tracks from local bands here in Central Florida. This month, we're featuring the band The Shoreline with their song, Give It Up To Us. So crank up the volume and enjoy. Sports Night Highlights.
It's a busy week ahead at UCF as we wrap up October and begin the month of November. We start on Friday with the volleyball team taking on Tulane at 7 p.m. It's Halloween at the venue, so make sure you come dressed in your costume and ready to cheer on the night. UCF then takes on UTEP the following night at home, once again at 7 p.m. at the venue. Women's soccer is on the road to finish up the regular season as they travel to Hattiesburg to face Southern Miss on Friday afternoon. Men's soccer steps out of conference for senior night on Saturday. They face Florida Atlantic at the soccer complex at 7 p.m. in their regular season finale. Men's tennis gets back into action this week. They host the UCF Invitational on campus Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. The cross country team is back in action this week also. They're heading to Memphis for the Conference USA Championships on Saturday. And men's golf is also on the road. They're traveling to Cashiers, North Carolina for the Hummingbird Intercollegiate, which runs Monday and Tuesday. It's another football Sunday on campus at UCF. First, check out a preview of the night's upcoming matchup with East Carolina on UCF Sports Today with George O'Leary, which airs Sunday at noon on West 2. Then the Knights take on the Pirates at Bright House Network Stadium. Kickoff is at 8.15 p.m. Sunday night. Radio coverage once again is on AM 740 WQTM. And if you can't make it to campus for the game, it's televised on ESPN. And as always, for all the latest news and scores from all UCF sports, check us out on the web at UCFAthletics.com, your home for UCF varsity sports 24-7. And as always, you can check out this episode and all of our archived episodes online anytime you want. All you have to do is log on to www.ucf.tv and click on UCF Sports Night. That is all for us here this week. For all of us here at UCF Athletics, I'm Jeff Sharon saying thank you so much for watching and go Knights! Hey, this is LT from 1011 WJRR. You're listening to the best sounds of area music. UCF Athletics, Access Magazine, and WJRR are proud to support local artists. You can find more great artists by going online at www.wjrr.com and also accessmag.com. And by listening to Native Noise each and every Sunday at 11 o'clock. UCF Sports Night has been brought to you by UCF TV. Today's show was also presented in part by Budweiser, the perfect balance of flavor and refreshment. Open up a world of taste. By the energy-saving conservation programs of Tico People's Gas. And by Centex Homes, proud to support UCF Athletics.